Hi, this is Elizabeth Varghese, and you're listening to Chasing Dreams with Amy J. Welcome to Chasing Dreams podcast with Amy J. Amy believes that realizing a life without regrets is achieved by taking chances, chasing your dreams, making moves, and overcoming your doubts. The Chasing Dreams podcast will help you overcome life's obstacles, believe in your potential, and inspire you to face your fears. And now here's the woman who is passionately pursuing her dreams, Amy J. Hey, Dream Chasers, this is Amy J. And with me today is a fellow Dream Chaser who I have known for years, is a sweetheart, a loving person. You are going to love this interview. It's Elizabeth Verghese, and she's been a working professional for the past seven years. She's been chasing her dream of serving the community at the Ummah Center, also known as the Urban Muslim Minority Alliance, since last December, so that's about 2014. Along with working hard to help students progress along their educational and career paths at Ummah, Elizabeth is an active member of the Indian Orthodox Church in Chicago, where she spends most of her time and dedicates most of her talents. Along with dancing, traveling, coloring, and lollygagging with her friends, she enjoys spending time in the service of others. With us today, none other than my friend, Elizabeth! Hello! I just got really excited towards the end there. Could you tell? A little bit. (laughs) Guys, I'm really happy to bring Elizabeth here. It's very hard not to say your nickname. It's hard to hear my official name. Yes. Um, guys, it's very, I'm very excited. We're going to keep that in, by the way. Very excited to bring Elizabeth here to you because she is someone who is not only chasing her dreams, but she's doing something I love to see, and that's giving back to the community. Elizabeth, do you think that's something that you've always wanted to do? Absolutely. But oh. what capacity, I, I wasn't sure until I got older. So, yeah, there was no hesitation when that, was there? (laughs) So you've always wanted to give back to the community, but you just didn't know how? Yeah, exactly. Um, Growing up, I I was always involved in my church, and a big part of that was being a part of the service of, you know, service of others at church. And so I think as I got older, I thought, okay, how can I do this, but outside of the Indian Orthodox community, outside of the four walls of my church? And so through different opportunities and, like, college and high school I got glimpses of it but I still didn't really know what I was doing until probably my later years of college well do you mind if we ask what did you major in in college business management business management okay and so was your first job outside of college Uma? no so um I worked at the job center so workforce development a county organization for six years and that was my first full-time job outside of college. So it seems like you, you found your, your way in pretty soon in, in both instances. I mean, you have a place, you, you, I'm assuming you liked it enough that you stayed there six years right. and, and here for seven months so far. But, I mean, did you have a hard time figuring that out? I mean, you knew you wanted to help people. You got mm-hmm. a degree in business management. How do you go from that to your next step? So, you know, in 2013 or 12, I can't remember, I went to India and for five weeks and I came back thinking, okay, I want to do more. Um, there's just such a difference between life here and there. What can I do? And so I thought my plan in life was to move back to India and do like social work. Mm-hmm. And so I was still studying business management, but I thought, okay, I want to do social work. That's what I really want. But I'm not sure to change my degree right now. It's way too late. My parents would kill me. <laughs> Um, so I just kept going with it, but then I thought, okay, I I don't want to do corporate. I don't want to do any of that stuff, you know? And I stayed at my current job, or I'm sorry, at my my job at the time because I was comfortable. It had, it was still, you know, um, it was service, but it was a little more reliable. There was security in it. And so I did that. And then I got an opportunity to work full time there after school. And I was like, okay, this is great. This is the first, you know, first gig outside of school. And it's perfect, right? And then, believe it or not, the Uma Center is located kitty corner from my old job. And I saw the sign, 
And I'm like, what is this magical place called Umma? Because in our language, in Malayalam, Umma means kiss, right? So literally, I'm like, okay, one day I'm just going to go over there and see what these people are about. And so I did. And I'm like, hi, I'm Elizabeth. I'm from down the street. I just want to know what you guys do. And so they told me basically education empowerment, you know, GED classes, computer training, food pantry, clothing drives. And I'm like, oh, this is great. Um, it's right so up your alley. Right, exactly. It's things that I would do like at church maybe, but, you know, it would affect a greater amount of people and people that I don't necessarily know. So I'm like, this is really cool. And then um, I'm a big believer in volunteering at the organization that you like or want to work in. That's kind of how I got my first full-time position at the job center. So I'm all about that volunteering life. So I told them, I'm like, hey, you know, I'm just down the street. Let me know how I can help. Like I want to plug in somehow, somewhere. Wait, so so, it, so they didn't even ask you or have a volunteer thing you just volunteered yourself yeah i'm like listen <laughs> hook me up i want to be a part of your organization yeah that's not surprising uh if you if you know elizabeth she's a very forward person you usually know what's going on and uh elizabeth one thing i want to i want to kind of go to when you said that you kind of, uh, you didn't fall into this, but that, oh, did I lose my train of thought? Probably. But let, let's go, talk about the fact that you are here. You went and you took this chance. Was that just because, did you have any intention of getting a job or you were like, let me just help them because I can keep helping people? You know, frankly, when I first met with the executive director and the vice president, that the first time I walked in there, I think I made a comment like, wow, it would be really great to work at a place like this just because it was, it was a nonprofit. I love nonprofits and they do a little bit of everything that I like, but I never thought that it would actually happen. So you weren't looking for a job actively? No, not at all. Yet there you were. I know. But, but did it happen right away or did you actually volunteer for a little bit and then it kind of happened? I started volunteering in February and then later that year, um, I started looking more actively for full-time work because I was still part-time temporary or something like that. And then in June, I was hired full-time permanent, you know, at the job center. And then fast forward a few months later, um, this conversation started happening about like, Hey, you want, you want to work at UMA full-time? And I'm like, say what? I just got a job. Um, but yeah, so it, it went from February to December is when I, when I started full-time there. That's amazing. Yeah. Because not, not a lot of people can say that they've had a constant stream of experience mm -hmm. when they get out of school. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you, you can say that. Yeah. And it, it was also really nerve wracking because I was in workforce development, right? development. So I knew, okay, these are all the things on paper that I need to do to get a job, you know, but and I knew networking was a part of it. I knew volunteering was, but you never know what's going to happen to you, right? You can know the book inside and out, but that's not always what happens in real life. So to be able to be like, hey, this happened to me. It works, you know, to each his own. But um, it was really cool to be able to, like, live that out, too. So now now, now we know you're here at UMA. You're doing amazing things there. The organization is amazing. Let's go back to... What instigated this? I mean, we, we, you always had the sense that you wanted to give back. You wanted to help. And you said you went to India and you came back and you said, I want to do more. What, what was it about that experience? So that trip in India, I was there for five weeks and I traveled to North India. I traveled to one, two, three, four cities outside of you know, my hometown in Kerala and just seeing the like poverty level, the lack of education, um, the lack of openness to like talk about problems, that sort of thing, it just all kind of dawned on me for some reason. And I feel like this always happens when I go to India because I went earlier this year and the same thing happened. But I felt a little better about myself because I'm like, okay, I'm not in corporate America, so I feel like I'm I'm doing something a little bit more along the lines of where I where I think I should be, right? So I think just seeing the difference between the way we live here and take so much for granted and we don't do enough to give back or to at least attempt to make a difference like back home, you know, that's another thing. I, to me, I was born in India, but I came here when I was three. But for me, home, home is still 
Kerala. You know, my grandfather is there. A lot of my family is there. My roots are still very strong there. So I think that 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 gave me more reason to be like, okay, I need to do something about this. Like maybe I can't do it here right now. I mean, I'm sorry, in India right now, which is why I thought, okay, I'll just come back here before I get married and live here for a while, do what I can. But in the meantime, I have to do something more meaningful here. So is this is this a, I'm, I don't want to say stopgap until you can get to India, but um, are you kind of waiting for that opportunity, that right fit, that right time? And do you think you'd go back and, and help out there somehow? So in an ideal world, yes. Um, in a world where I wouldn't be getting married in seven months, absolutely. But now that I am getting married in seven months, things have kind of changed. Um, and I don't know if how practical that is, but I'm okay with that. You know, I've found a lot of value in my work right now and in my field. So I'm able to be pretty happy with what I do and what I'm able to do even like back home. So, um, I don't know if that, I don't know if that's, if that even makes sense in my head, it does. But like, I, I never thought I would get married. I didn't think I would get married at least for another 10 years, probably. So this all just kind of, this marriage stuff like fell into my lap. And so <laughs> the other stuff is kind of on hold, if you will, maybe forever. Well, you don't know, right? I mean, the, that's right. the thing. I mean, you didn't see this marriage thing coming and it happened, which congratulations, by the way. Thank you. Um, and, and he's a nice guy, guys. We're, we're happy for this. Um, so you didn't see this marriage thing coming and it happened and it worked out or is working out. Uh, right. So I would... I, I think those listening would probably say the same thing. You never know. That's true. You never know. I'm not crossing anything off my list, but, you know, for the immediate future, I will be in the continental United States. Well, I think that's that's safe to say. I think there's nothing wrong with that. Um, he, here's a question about what you're doing as you're trying to figure this out, right? You're kind of in this area and you're 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 doing things to help others. Do you ever think, how do I, how do I, do you, do you ever want to try and instill that in them to kind of spread I, it or continue it? I do, but um, I find it's harder to do in my like professional work as opposed to like in my church work. That's interesting. It's, Why? It's weird because I think, I feel like a church when I'm with young people or younger people or just like little, literally Sunday school kids or you know, elders that I've grown up with, it's easier to be frank with them and be like, look, this is what you need to do because it's like family. Um, and maybe that's a cultural thing too, but with the community worker, like people in the community here, there's like a boundary that needs to be um, respected a little bit more. Mm -hmm. you, you have to be politically correct. You can't just be open and be like, look, if you don't do this, you can't do that sort of thing. Maybe in my lack of experience in this area or lack of wisdom, I, I just haven't tapped into how to do that gracefully yet but I, I i can confidently say i try but not not as hard as i i should be maybe with at work as opposed to like a church or with my family well at the same time you did say it's only been seven months that is true but i mean i've been working with the same population for seven years you know so i haven't found how to do that there have been maybe a couple of people that you know we've connected well enough where i'm like hey let's talk about how you can give back you know mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you're right. It, it has only been seven months, so we know. Yeah, I mean, I, I I think with all things, it takes time to figure that out. I mean, your church family, you've you've known your entire life. Right. So, you know, there of course, there's going to be some comfort in that. It was just a curious question I had because I think for dream chasers and the things, and, and again, the reason I connect with you a lot for this is because you give back. And I think one thing that a mentor of mine has said is to whom much is given much is expected. Mm -hmm. And I, I truly believe that. And I'm very blessed for it. And I'm hopefully giving back through this podcast. And, and that's something I see you doing. And mm -hmm. I, I was just curious to see what it is people you work with. Like, do you see them changing or, or feeling that way as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, that's another part of the job that's kind of hard, you know, because of the clientele students that I work with, we don't see those results immediately. And so just in the past couple of months, like I have a student who she has a lot of potential and she has a lot going for her, but 
you know, you can only, what's that saying? Like, you can only bring the horse to water, right? You can't make it drink or something like that. That is the saying. Yeah, I totally butchered it, but whatever. Um, you know, I, I see that a lot, which is frustrating. And so until you're able to reach that level with them, in my experience, I can't even be like, hey, you need to give back until, because to me, it's like, okay, you need to get your stuff together first. And then let's talk about how to, how to let you give back, you know? Yeah. No, that's actually a very good point. Um, I think that's a good point. You know, you got to get you got to get yourself together before mm -hmm. you can help others. And I feel like um, this is my first time admitting this in public, but I, I learned that first from my mom. You know, she would always like tell me, you need to get yourself together before you can go out and wait on other people hand and foot. And I never really got that. And I think like now I get it. No, I think that's actually... Now that you've brought it to my attention, mm -hmm. it makes sense. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. Look, at, why would someone who has the same issue or, you know, it's in the Bible, but it's also, it's, it's a good philosophy. You know, how can you go and tell people to fit, get them, get their lives right if yours isn't? Right. You know, there, there is a hypocrisy to that, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. Before we go into the fun stuff, I do want to ask you've you've been in this area what is something that you've kind of a lesson that's that you've learned from umma or your previous job that is stuck with you um i think the biggest thing is you like literally every day you never know how you're gonna impact someone's life um at my old job we as a career specialist for the job center we wrote out um i don't even know what the stuff is called anymore but basically we helped fund people to go back to school for short-term training and one of my first clients as a full-time worker there you know she was laid off and giving her this training you know gave her just the right amount of credentials to get her get on her feet again and to land a job that will help support her family again and so by me interviewing her and giving her the time it you know made like a ripple effect difference in her life right and she's probably making like five or six figures, but you know, it's still hard when you get laid off and experience it like that, right? Oh, absolutely. At Uma, um, one of our clients, he was also laid off and then he he had to work two or three jobs. Um, he was struggling to make ends meet. And then he went through our training and, and he was working full time and he, through working at Uma and with us, you know, he was able to kind of step out of poverty and into something better for his family. And maybe I didn't, you know, I didn't give hand him a job on a silver platter, but knowing that with both of these individuals and everybody in between, like the smallest of interactions, you just never know how, how impactful it can be on somebody else on their day, on their life. Like that's huge. You know, like if you just pause and think about that, like the smallest thing can do the biggest thing for someone else. It's, I think that's just mind blasting. Is that kind of, um, is that what gets you going? Being able to play that, have that impact? I think so. Yeah. I mean, it's a combination of different things, but I think that's a really big, big part of it. I like that though. I mean, cause you're right. The smallest of gestures and the smallest of, of things, like one thing we hope with these podcasts is that it encourages or inspires someone and has them going off and chasing them, chasing their dream, which can lead to bigger, better things, or maybe even just a better situation. Mm -hmm. And you know, Hey guys, if that ever happens, let me know. I'd love to have that mind blasting feeling, right? You know, and, and, and what you're doing and what the fact that there is a resource for people to go to, to get help is awesome. And, and do you get a lot of, um, clients or do you get a lot of people coming in? Oh yeah. I mean, um, so we have a food pantry twice a week. And so just through that alone, we, we probably see like, at least 30 people, or I'm sorry, 60 people a week. That's just for the food pantry alone. So I see them. And then for my program uh, right now, I'm working with like four students at a time. Um, but then like, you know, during the summer we do like a refugee program. And so, or, you know, adopt a refugee program, excuse me. And so then we meet like all sorts of different people. And like, I go out through in the community and I network and I um, talk about Uma. So I get clients that way. So it really just depends on the day, on the week. But yes, overall, we do get a lot of people coming in. Yeah, so then you're, you're clearly a resource that 
that is making a difference. Thanks, man. We try. <laughs> All right. So one of the things that we do on this show is a fun game called Rapid Fire. Mm -hmm. I, I pre-warned you that this was going to happen. So for those who are listening, as Elizabeth tries to mentally get ready for this game, Rapid Fire is when Elizabeth picks a topic between one and three. And then based on that topic, we are going to rapidly fire back and forth, alter alternating things that are related to that topic. Okay, so if it's sports, then we're going to name different sports back and forth. First person to hesitate, say something that is clearly wrong, or just repeat an answer, or, you know, you just know that you're off, you you've lost, is out. Okay? Got it. You good? Yes. All right, so you have to pick a number between one and three. Um, okay, I pick three. Number three, we have movie trilogies. Oh, dear. <laughs> you have to name a movie series that is a trilogy. That means this, it, cannot, right. <laughs> it cannot be something with only a single sequel. And, and okay, so... For for our sake, are we counting movies that are normally trilogies that were made into four? You know what, Amy? It's whatever you want to do because you're gonna win this. So fast. <laughs> it's whatever. It's whatever floats your boat, really. Wait. Oh, are you giving up already? Uh, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> we're picking I'll a different topic then. If no. trilogies is gonna kill you off the bat. I mean, I would have left like three seconds. All right. We're going to do uh, ice cream flavors. Okay. All right, some energy. Okay. <laughs> ice cream flavors. You ready? Yeah. You want to go first? Sure. Go. Cookies and cream. Butter pecan. Chocolate. Vanilla. Pumpkin pie. Coffee. Is that a flavor? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Coffee. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, mocha. Rocky Road. Fudge. Dolce de leche. Oh my goodness. Um, That's a lot of hesitation going on right there. I know. I'm I what? 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 No, you don't have an answer. I think you would. <laughs> you don't have an answer. You see this time? This is you losing. <laughs> oh, man. I'm sorry, dude. That's and guys, okay. I wasn't being harsh. It's because we're friends that I say it that way. Right. I'm right. so sorry. It was a valiant effort. And hey, you did pretty well considering. It wasn't movie trilogies. That's true. What would have happened if I won? Uh, you would have been named on the blog post as a winner. Oh. And my record would go down by one. Got it. Okay. Well, so, you're welcome for letting you win. Thank you. See, this is what <laughs> friends do. Yes. This yes. is what friends do. Thank you so much for, for that win. Um, but before we wrap up, guys, you know that we have to check out your corner. So is there one thing or two things uh, that you would want to share with someone who's chasing their dream? A piece of advice, a quote, a book, a resource? If sky was the limit, what would you pick? Um, I would share one quote. Um, it's by Mahatma Gandhi, and it's the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. Um, I just think, you know, it's important Maybe not everybody's cut out for nonprofit work or whatever, but it's always important to give back and find out how you can help somebody else because you just never know. Boom. And 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 she makes a very good point, guys. You don't always have to do nonprofit work, and you don't always have to give back the way someone else is giving back. Um, there are so many different ways to give back, and as long as you are doing your best to help someone else, the world will keep moving along and, and hopefully towards a better tomorrow. And on that note, Jamie, when you no. talk about the world moving along and stuff, I got to make a plug for my favorite book in the whole wide world, The Alchemist. Um, there's a quote from there that's like something to the effect of, if you want something badly enough, the whole universe will work together to make that happen. So I feel like if, if we keep putting in our good energy, if we keep doing our best, good things are going to happen to ourselves and to those around us. It's just, it's inevitable. It has to. Well said. Well said. And and for anyone who is a little confused by the fact that she called me Jamie, 
That is my twin sister. Oh, dear. You did, which is hilarious. And oh, I wish you guys could see her face right now. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> you have now marked yourself on this show, oh. and I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> on that note, guys, I had to leave with, with, with that hilarity because it's awesome. Uh, Elizabeth, thank you so much. <laughs> Stop laughing. I got to say this. All right, serious. And I'm keeping this in because it's more fun that way. Elizabeth, thank you so much for joining us and encouraging others to chase their dreams. Uh, I really appreciate it and love what you're doing. Wish you nothing but the best, especially with your marriage and your wedding preparations. Good luck. Thank and you so much. I'll see you there. But um, till then, keep chasing your dreams. And do you want to say anything else for to anybody? No, thank you guys for listening. And that Dream Chasers is Elizabeth Verghese. I hope you guys enjoyed listening to her story as much as I enjoyed talking to her about it. She's doing wonderful things over at the Uma Center, and I wish her nothing but the best. And hopefully you guys were inspired by her and her, the way she's giving back. And hopefully you got, will find some way during your Dream Chase story to give back as well. Doesn't matter how, it's just always important to give back. That's my personal philosophy. Now, if you want to find all the links that were mentioned or read up a little bit more about what Elizabeth is doing, head over to the show notes at chasingdreamshq.com slash episode 15. That's episode 15. And be sure to connect with us over at chasingdreamshq.com as well as on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and you can find us at at chasingdreamshq. Until next time, dream chasers, keep chasing. Thank you so much for listening to Chasing Dreams. Amy would love to connect with you and hear all about your pursuit of chasing your dreams. Connect with Amy on Twitter at AmyJ21. That's A-I-M-E-E-J-2-1. Or leave a comment on her website, ChasingDreamsHQ.com. We hope you'll join Amy next week. And until then, keep chasing.